you're someone that is currently in the college admissions process watching this video, or if you're looking back at your college admissions process, or if you're that poor 11 year old where your mom comes in every day and asks you how you're doing on your SATs, then I think this video is relatively relevant for you. Today's video is going to be structured very structurally, much like my lack of structure in my liberal arts education, but I'm going to quickly explain what I think is the difference between a liberal arts school and a regular college. Then I'm going to talk about my school and how weird slash unique slash why I liked it and how different my experience was than probably any other liberal arts school or college experience in general. Then I'm going to talk about why slash how the liberal arts experience I think screwed me. And then I'm going to talk about how the liberal arts experience benefited me and then finish off with my typical snarky comments and thank yous. What is liberal arts you might ask? It might be one of the biggest questions that come to mind as you apply for colleges or if you look back at your college admissions process and think, what was I thinking when I applied to XYZ schools? Schools largely divide themselves into two branches in the United States, the liberal arts colleges and then regular universities. When I say regular universities, it's the colleges that you're thinking about. The UCLA's, the UC Berkeley's, the Harvard's, the MIT's, the Ivy's as a whole, big name schools, big 10 schools, schools with big football teams you care about. Liberal arts schools fall in the other category of schools you've probably never heard of. Schools that you don't know any friends that come from there because only like three people go to each school. Schools that people have to say, hey, I went to a small school, blank, it's a liberal arts school, you probably never heard of it. And then they say the school name really quickly so that they're not ashamed that you've never really heard of it. And then they have to supplement it by saying, it's actually a good school though. For those of you not aware by not stalking my LinkedIn or haven't been following this channel for a while, I've never explicitly said my school name before, I think, just because I am weird like that in terms of privacy, even though all of this is public information. But for a quick little disclaimer, I went to that school. Liberal arts schools, unlike regular colleges, I think the biggest, biggest thing that matters for liberal arts schools and is the biggest plus of a liberal arts school, you don't choose your major when you go in. That's one of the biggest things I have a trouble understanding this university education, higher ed education system of this country and countries in general. How do you know what you want to study when you're 18 when you barely don't understand yourself as a whole? You don't know what kind of girls you like, you don't know how to dress, you don't know how to take care of your pimple still, and you're going to decide what you're going to be studying for four years, investing $250,000 into, and how it will affect your career forever. I do think that people like to believe that majors don't matter, but I'm currently of the school of thought that majors kind of do matter in how they direct your life and the way that you learn to think. Bottom line, liberal arts schools allows you to apply without choosing a major, explore the various majors for a couple of years, maybe a year or two, and then declare a major later on. In my case, I didn't declare my major until second semester of sophomore year, and many programs within the school don't even allow you to declare it, and they want you to build a repertoire with the professors, with the program, and have you actually understand what you're signing up for. I actually think the biggest benefit of this is the fact that you could explore various classes. And if you think you're a business person, but hey, you figure out that arts history is kind of cool, or you like computer science, or you want to explore biology, you're not restricted by your major to not be able to take those classes. Obviously, as I said before, I think other schools are taking advantage of this. I've heard recently that regular universities now also allow you to do this and explore and not declare for later. But I'm still of the understanding that most schools gets you to declare a major or apply to a specific major and liberal arts schools don't. As for my specific school and its interestingness that I really enjoyed and I also am very aware that some people actually don't like these things but this is my personal experience so deal with it. My school was very unique for number one. Liberal arts schools are small in general but my school was also particularly small ranging in around 1600 to 1800 people at any given point on campus in the undergrads, each grade consisting of roughly 400 to 500 people, which is smaller than my high school. Due to our school being historically very old, historically very old, started in 1749, older than the country itself. And as you can tell by now, yes, I was a tour guide. During my tour guide days, I came up with a statistic. I kind of did rough math, probably wrong, but given that my school started very, very small, wasn't even co-ed until 1988 or something, struggled in the beginning, had very, very, very small school sizes of like 40 people at one point. I came up with this rough estimate that it is probably possible slash I think factual that there might be more people at UCLA currently in the undergrad program than have ever graduated from my school, which I think is valuable because the less 
people have something, the more valuable it is. Or at least I like to tell myself. So number one, it was a very small school. You knew everybody. If you don't like small communities, if you want to do things and get away with it, perhaps not the best thing. If you don't want to walk into a party and know everyone there, perhaps not the best thing. But I actually thought small school size was a good thing. This also translated into a small class size. The biggest class I've ever had was probably maybe 30 people. Most classes were under 20 people. I've had classes with less than 10 people. That was also great. Personal attention, professorship, awesome. My school was located in the rural areas of Virginia, middle of Virginia, in a small town called Lexington, Virginia, being a Southern California boy. This was kind of a culture shock. There was like two Asian restaurants, both of which are actually pretty decent. It was kind of middle of nowhere, surrounded by a forest next to the Appalachian Trail. Never really enjoyed nature. I grew to learn to like nature through this. I think being in an isolated place, kind of in this Hogwartsy setting, was a very romantic idea for studying. It's very calm, very quiet. I enjoyed that aspect. Our school was also the biggest proportion Greek system school in America. I don't know if it's still, but when I entered, it was like 80, 90% Greek affiliated. I was part of Greek life. Clearly, I am the most Greek life looking guy out there. I enjoyed it. It added on to my college experience. It was just fun to be part of something. Every human being innately wants to be a part of something and being a part of the brotherhood and being a part of a system that everyone was part of was, I think, a great part of college. Obviously, it had its limitations and those that weren't part of it felt left out. There were a lot of issues surrounding Greek life as our history tells us, especially recent history, if you read the news at all. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good time. I am still closest friends and keep in contact with all my fraternity bros. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. I think I'm going to get criticized if I don't talk about this because this is a hot button issue at our school, but it definitely was not the most diverse school. It is very, very Southern affiliated, very East Coast affiliated, very boarding school, private school affiliated. But that is just how this country has run for a while. And by the time that I entered, it was like 84% white and four to three percent what I am and then everyone else in similar numbers obviously an issue for some personally I was fine with it I thought it was a good exposure to something that I wasn't familiar with coming from a city that is the biggest majority Asian city in America I'm not gonna make this video about race we could talk about race on and on and on maybe later but personally I thought it was fine I actually seek discomfort actively I think there's growth in being in areas that you're not the most comfortable in not that being around non-diverse places made me uncomfortable but it was definitely something new that I've never experienced and also you couldn't hide because there was such little people you had to mingle with the people that were available and southern people or east coast people were not the people that I was the most used to I definitely stood out in the beginning for a wide variety of reasons but in retrospect I was fine and I really liked it and I have made lifelong friends let's look at the liberal arts part and how it screwed me if you start anything two years in as opposed to zero years in it's not going to be the most expertise things you come out with. If you study computer science for four years, starting at the age of 18 and coming out at 22, as opposed to starting at 20 and then coming out at 22, there's going to be a world of a difference, especially because you learn faster when you're young and things accumulate. I obviously have seen the disbenefits of that. whoop de doo I think it's very hard to acknowledge slash understand what you want to do when you're early, when you're young. So there's definitely pros and cons to both ends of these. I think the way that it screwed me is in the sense that I didn't know what I wanted to do early on. And because the school atmosphere encourages you to explore, I think I did a bit too much exploring and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do slash didn't set my foot down on the thing I should have committed to during college when it's the last time you ever own time to yourself and someone doesn't own your time when you're working. Monday scaries, you just kind of get distracted and you're taking all these cool classes and taking art and music and art history and science and environmental studies and you're like, maybe I shouldn't become a numbers person and maybe I should go explore the arts. I think optionality always is not the best thing. Liberal arts gives you this sense of optionality that could be beneficial, but it could hurt you in the long run. I also think people that know for a fact what they want to do in the beginning, but then get tempted slash lured in maybe by scholarship, by location, by prestige, also get screwed by liberal arts. If you know for a fact you're going to be an engineer, if you know for a fact you're a genius comp site person, if you know for a fact you're going to be a drawer person, probably don't go to liberal arts. There's no point in exploring if you already know what you're going to do, especially if liberal arts schools, the way that they're structured, have no research opportunities, have no big infrastructure. Many of them don't have crazy, crazy alumni connections that would get you to specific, specific jobs. That's why I think the biggest issue with current day education system in the United States is the fact that there's no career self-exploration in the curriculum 
problem when you're young. The earlier you figure things out about yourself, the better it is for you to position yourself for later. Obviously, I step back and go back to my statement of how would you know what you are when you're young? But I think if you take time when you're young to understand who you are, what you're good at, then you can invest for yourself in the future. And maybe you don't need that liberal arts experience. That all goes in total to say that if you are a sciencey person or a STEMI person, or if you're a banking person that requires that early pipeline, that guaranteed target school experience, or that accredited program engineering, then liberal arts might not be the best program for you because liberal arts is quite literally the arts that are liberal, progressive approach to understanding how to study and taking a wide approach and doing everything and anything to really get into becoming a well-rounded person. If you're someone that just wants to be too hundo at one thing, as opposed to 75 at everything, like yours truly, then liberal arts probably not for you. In similar respects, I think that the pros far outweighs the cons for me specifically. I'm someone that's always been 75 at everything, 200 and nothing. So I think the liberal arts model fit me perfectly. I frankly still don't know what I want to do with my life. So imagine what I was when I was 18, the fact that I had the ability, the privilege to explore all these various areas, get together with peers of similar minds, and be in small classroom sizes to really understand and explore the depths of academics and who I am as a person. Nothing does it better than the liberal arts experience. Aside from the very valuable friendships that I've gathered at that beautiful campus and the various professional relationships, the professor relationships, and the overall community relationships, I think the biggest takeaway, the most tangible thing that I've gotten from my quarter of a million dollar education is the fact that in a liberal arts setting, in a liberal arts classroom, and especially in a very small liberal arts school setting, as I mentioned before, you can't hide. You must explore and release, output your opinions, and you're always put on the spot to participate. You can't hide behind a computer and play Tetris while the professor speaks. He's going to pick on you and say, Brian, what is your opinion? And I think that has gotten me to the level of eloquency that I've hit, the ease of talking to other people and really bringing out conversation that frankly, and I hope people don't take this the wrong way, it's going to come across the wrong way, that I've seen my peers that are not from liberal arts schools or from big schools with 700 people in a classroom, I don't see it with them. And that's not their fault because they're not used to exploring their own opinions. They're so used to just getting the homework done, having a TA grade their assignment, and hiding behind the Zoom camera. So in retrospect, in summary, I think the cons are that there's too many options. If you know for a fact you know what you're doing, if you are someone that needs to apply to a specific program, if you are someone that needs to benefit from an undergrad research facility, then liberal arts probably not for you. If you're someone like me that likes to explore, that needs the diversification, and still has no idea what the heck you're doing, I think liberal arts best option ever. One sentence summary of the day. The liberal arts experience did not make me liberal or artsy. I am really gonna get in trouble for this video. As always, thank you guys for your time, and I will see you guys next time. Let's go.